Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of Family Law. A great season premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So obviously picking up in the aftermath of last season, I can only assume it's been about a day or so after everything, because everything's still pretty fresh. Daniel, you know, getting Craig. It's probably been like a day or two, but it, it can't have been that long that for Joanne to not know that Lucy was staying there. To be fair, who knows how often uh, Joanne comes home, but, you know, whatever the case may be. So she didn't know about Lucy and obviously Daniel and Craig, which if it wasn't for Nina, I would have never, I never pieced that together last season until she's like, oh, hi, Daniel. Hi, Craig. Daniel, Craig. I was like, didn't even cross my mind last season. But either way, um... Daniel's enjoying his new position, you know, as a partner. Um, and obviously this episode heavily revolves around one particular case. A woman, Norma, her husband, Bert, quote unquote, died. But then she watches a cat video because she watches a lot of cat videos. They're probably, you know, cats and dogs are probably the most popular, like, animal videos you typically see. Especially, I feel like cats have always kind of reigned supreme on the internet. But dogs are, you know, close second. At least from my perspective, it's always seemed like that. I feel like I see more cat videos than I see dog videos. But I think it kind of equals out depending on what app you're on. Going on a huge tangent. But the fact is that she recognizes her husband's birthmark on his hand. And she's like, I heard the laugh and I think it was my husband uh, that he's alive. And I was like, well, he faked his death. And for that to be how you found out was interesting. It reminds me of She-Hulk. Uh, slight spoilers, but there's like an episode where this guy, was it Mr. Immortal, who can't die, and basically one of his exes found out about him being alive because they watched a video of him kind of jump, hit a car, and then get up, and that made them go like, wait, he's still alive, even though he faked his death? We kind of had something going on with Bert, but the moment um, Abby and Norma tracked him down, and he was like, I have no idea who this is, I was like, does he have amnesia? And obviously the whole point for Abby is I've got to prove that he doesn't actually have amnesia. And it's interesting how, I mean, obviously that's the kind of a point of this story where it's like everything Abby's going through, regardless of it. I mean, I always think that's kind of like the important aspect of like a show like this too, is a character always taking their issues in their life and take it into whatever their profession may be. You've seen it like, you know, like a prime example that would be the TV show Lucifer. Lucifer would always try adapting certain things that are happening in his personal life into the cases him and uh, Chloe were investigating or vice versa, taking stuff from the investigation and applying it to his life. I mean, that's always, I mean, that's a very human thing to do. Like we always take and personify what we're going through and then we kind of apply and we, we might lash out at others because everything Abby's going through, that's why she's kind of treating Lucy like crap. Like they haven't always had the best relationship, but their relationship definitely improved more and more over the course of the first season. But and she was there consoling Lucy, like, after everything between her and Maggie, but now it's turned into, like, a, I have animosity towards you, because Abby was in a very vulnerable state. She she was a seconds away from drinking if uh, Lucy hadn't shown up when she did, so it's like, right, I, I'm in a vulnerable spot, you're in a vulnerable spot, you're my little sister, you're crying, but it's like, now reality sets in of, like, you're a cheater, you remind me of my husband, so it's like, she's, she's got, you know, she would, because she wouldn't... She kind of jabbed at Lucy last season about the whole situation, but she wasn't as vicious as she was this premiere about it. It's because she's taking all her Frank frustrations because she like she blows up at Frank, but all the jabs she's taking on Lucy, they're not even just jabs. She's like death by a thousand cut, like is what she's kind of doing to Lucy. But it's like, yeah, uh, it's just she's taking a lot of her venom towards Frank. Like I say, he gets some of it, but a lot of that's in and towards Lucy because it's like, oh, you're cheaters, especially when Lucy was like, hey, you should probably try and look at things from his perspective. From her psychology standpoint, it makes sense that she is the person who tries to look at everything very even culture. But even she has her biases and even she, it's like, right, she's biased in this situation because it's like, right, uh, you know, Lucy has her own complications, so, which we'll talk about later. But obviously... Going back to the main overarching case, Abby is so certain that um, Bert is lying and Lucy's examination, it's like, no, it seems legit because after like up to a certain point, it was like a year after his parents died because apparently his parents like died like a year apart from each other when his early 20s, he was like, after that, he kind of like, the he life is kind of a haze until like his present day, like when he uh, met his current wife like a year ago. So everything in between there, which includes his marriage to Norma and stuff, kind of um, is a blank spot for him. So 
Because Bert was the type of guy who made invention after invention, trying to like get that sweet spot, but none of them worked out. He sunk all these mo all this money into it. Not just his money, it was Norma's money. He was taking money out of their account. Now she's in major debt. She ended up having to like uh, find different work. I think she lost her job because of the stress of everything. Like, a whole bunch of collectors came out. So it's like, initially it's like, oh, did Bert kill him, like fake his death to get away from her? And it turns out that's not the case. Because I noticed it too in court when um, the device that he made that she used, uh, that Norman uses as an alarm for her medicine, like you could tell it was affecting him. It was triggering something there, but that in conjunction with all his other inventions, they were able to kind of uh, bring forth the fact is that yes, he wasn't faking it, but all of that triggered those latent memories and he remembered everything. Because um, it turns out like it wasn't fake, it was real. That was kind of Lucy's whole point, but that didn't stop. Um, that didn't stop uh, Abby from tearing into her on the stand. It's like, right, you made me look like an idiot and all that. It's like, oh, cry me a river. It's like, you know, like uh, uh, Abby's kind of, a, not kind of, straight up a douchebag. And so she can be an asshole towards people, but especially her siblings. But I love that it's like, Daniel was like, right, that was harsh. But honestly, it was super effective. And I love Lucy hitting him for it because it's like, right. That's kind of a D-bag move. It's almost like, yeah, I'm siding with, I'm like calling out one sister, but also siding with her and in, in, in turn kind of shitting on my other sisters. But the actually sad aspect of it is that the reason, why, well, Bert took more money out and he had this one invention, but it didn't work. It was like air conditioned shoes or whatever. And he was so disappointed in himself. He was so low of like, yeah, I betrayed you. I did all this. I took the last money of our account. And he tried to kill himself, but he's like, I even failed at that, and that led to his whole like uh, fugue amnesia. So it's a, it's a, it's the trauma of like, right, trying to kill yourself, and your mind trying to protect yourself from that, but also the guilt you felt about your relationship. So he admits to Norma like, oh, I love you, but he also loves his um, current wife too. It's, it's a complicated thing because it's like, right, it's like both sides of who he was. Uh, Bert and Ezra have kind of come together in this moment, and it's this complicated thing, but. At the end of the day, Norma's like, I get that, and I I can forgive you, but I can't be with you anymore because, you know, a leopard can't change its stripes or whatever, you know, or, or spots, rather. And at the end of the day, how do I know you won't hurt me again? I can't guarantee that. And even, you know, Bert kind of nods his head like, yeah, I, I completely understand. And when the judge is like, right, you did kind of hurt your wife doing what you did, not just kind of like you put her in a very strenuous situation and so any profit she he's making for like the like the pot device he's made now uh, which is apparently like there's a whole bunch of pre-sales for it so the one thing that's that that's that also heartbreaking thing all the money he stole and kind of used from his wife uh none of those inventions worked out but oh the invention he made was someone else like they're probably one go around with it like that makes it cut even deeper like oh with her you had success you know but it's like right they're going to eventually sit down and have a talk about all the the um the profits or like like what she deserves a share of because of everything Bert put her through so it also puts kind of a stain on everything with his wife because it's like oh you really were married and not only that I realize how much of a dick you are so I don't know what that's going to do to his current marriage that you know and once again just like the aspect of how that blurs together with so many other storylines and elements in this uh, because obviously this episode kind of heavily revolves around relationships and like how you know the different points of views from it like you get um the perspective of like the person that's been cheated on and you get the perspective of the cheater. So it's just, it's so fascinating because Abby's at one of her meetings and I love one of the ladies call her out and she's like, fine, you're trying to bully me into talking about it. It's like, right. I am finally, it's like, right. I'm not a schmalcoholic. I'm an alcoholic. Fine. You're going to bully me into saying it. And the fact is everything she's ever worked so hard for was to get her family back. But now it's like, right, I caught my husband with another woman in an elevator and he says nothing was going to happen. But even then it's like, yeah, like, oh, nothing was going to happen. Like, for one, I, we all can read BS on that. But also, why would you even put yourself in a situation where it could even be possibly believed to be anything other? Especially when you know that. She'd already made, and this this also makes Frank seem like even more of a gaslighter. The fact is that he was like, nothing happened. like, But it's like, no, you specifically liked a tweet from her. Like, she already had some idea of something going on. Especially because I, like, I let something on. I was like, right, Frank and uh, 
Abby hooked up last season. Like, that's where it's like, makes it even worse. I'm like, no, we were in a good place and getting better. And then all of a sudden you do this. Like, it's almost like you were already looking for an excuse. Like what was happening was already bubbling. And you were just like, you hadn't pulled the trigger on it yet. And you never did, but it still doesn't make what you did super inappropriate. Cause yeah, it's like, you know, it's, she even asked later on, like, can you tell me you weren't, you said you weren't going to sleep with that woman. Can you tell me that's for a fact? And he's like, I can't. At least he could admit that because that's the thing between Abby and Norma. At the end of the day, what matters the most to them is the truth. For Norma, it's like, I do believe, um, Bert has amnesia that he was in that fugue state. But at the end of the day, I just want to know the truth. And that's what Abby wanted to know because she keeps going on about how she's not going to divorce Frank or literally everyone else is saying, no, you should, you should prepare yourself, especially her mom. You know, it's understandable from her mom's perspective because her mom's, you know, going to be, well, past like her, past uh, her dad. I don't know if like we've really covered whether or not Joanne's, I mean, she's had, you know, companionship, but I don't know if it's ever been anything to that same skill. Like who knows if she's ever gotten remarried. I don't think that ever came up before. She'd probably stick stuck away from marriage. She probably wants to keep things as casual as possible because she never wants to be hurt like that again. But it's like, she's saying all this, and obviously for Abby, it's like, no, 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 I'm not going to get divorced. Because for her, it's like, her family's already in a strenuous situation, and me divorcing my husband, divorcing Frank, it's just going to make that worse. Especially because, as she said, like, her sobriety was all on the antithesis of, hey, I want to get my family back together. And now it's going to be a situation about, like, I want my sobriety for the purposes of being there for my children, you know? Because it kind of has to, at the end of the day, it has to be something you want to do. Because when you latch on to, like, oh, I'm doing it for for this reason, I think, and I, I and I can't speak. I ha, I'm not. I haven't. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go as far as saying like, oh, I probably like. I feel like I could be the type of person who has an addictive person. I've, I've just never alcohol's just never been my thing. I've never been the drug person, but because I'm also scared because I feel like there's just a switch in my brain ready to flip that like that addiction aspect. I feel like it's there. I just haven't like like haven't like tapped it yet so that's that's just that's just me it's it's a weird thing i idiosyncrasy i have about the, the thought process of so that's why i kind of like you know i've never been the biggest alcohol person but that's why i'm like i feel like i could that could be such a slippery soap for me so that's why i just don't even test those waters either way uh the, the point i was making is like i i don't know enough about like you know uh, especially the recovery process and going to meetings and knowing the ins and outs of like the 12-step process but part of me was like i was i would assume like you wouldn't want to latch on to like it has to come from you first you'll want to do it and yes abby wants to do it but it's attached to her family and it's such a thing that it could be such a fickle thing that can become such a wobbly bridge because because the whole point is to equip you with the tools necessary so that any temptations in life and, and hardships won't send you immediately to your vice. That's kind of like what that's supposed to prepare you for because addiction is a lifelong issue. It isn't something like, oh, you cure it and you're done with it. It's like, no, you struggle with it for the rest of your life. So I think it more so has to come from Abby of like, I want to be better for me and also for my children. That has to come first and foremost because her, like her entire foundation came crumbling down because she found out about Frank and it destroyed the very reason. Cause it wasn't just for kids. It was like, I want to be back with my husband too. I want us to be together as a family, but that all came crumbling down because of Frank's actions. And she's like, ever since then, all I want to do is drink. So that's, that. that's uh, fascinating. And, and I do appreciate, I really love the fact that she doesn't have to go through that alone. Like, obviously, she's b built up a great system around her. Like, yes, she and her siblings have their issues, but, like, she still has them. She kind of has more of her dad in her life. Luckily, she has someone as amazing as Jerry in her life. Um, uh, other uh, relationship stuff. Let's talk about the Lucy stuff. Because, you know, once again, all of... Um, all of Abby's jazz, because Abby's the only one, well, her and Joanne are the only ones who, are the only ones who know about it. And I thought it was so interesting, because Abby's, once again, cutting so deep into Lucy, because once again, she has a personal situation. I think Joanne is so separated from it, plus she also probably has a little more sympathy towards, um, towards um, uh, Lucy, because of her mom and everything, because it's like, right, you lost your mom when you were young, so she's probably a little more sympathetic, because obviously she doesn't really give Daniel, I don't know, I don't, I think, 
Lucy's mom, for whatever reason, I thought in my head, like, Lucy and Daniel had the same mom. I don't think they do. For whatever reason, I thought they did, because Daniel was like, oh, yeah, my mom's here. But it was like, no, I think they do have separate moms, don't they? I, for whatever reason in my head, I thought they were. So I was like, oh, are they half siblings? I thought they were, like, full, full siblings. And so like, all, or, sorry, all, three, all three of them are, like, half siblings? I didn't remember that from last season. I thought Daniel and Lucy were full siblings. Maybe that was always my misconception. Maybe I just misunderstood that conversation. But it's like, because Lucy's mom died when she was, like, young. But that that might have been, like, her stepmom. That might be what I'm thinking of. Like, Lucy's stepmom died when she was young, and her actual biological mom is still alive. Maybe that's what that was about. I, I don't remember. Like I said, maybe her and Daniel do have different moms, and I just don't remember. Either way, uh... So maybe that's why Joanne's a little more sympathetic to, because like her issue is like, right, she can, I guess like a woman cheating versus a man cheating. Cause it's also like, right. You're because when she looks at Frank, she only sees everything between her and her husband. So it's like, it's understandable why she'd have that perspective. She doesn't have that same perspective when it comes to Lucy. So she's a little more sympathetic. Like, yo, take it easy on Lucy. Cause it's like, at the end of the day, she's a kid. And I think maybe she's also going to be a little more like, Hey, you can't help yourself too. Because it's like, Frank is, Frank is his own thing. But you, your, your dad being who he is, you kind of had no shot because your dad kind of grew you up in a dysfunctional, uh, thing because you, your brother and your sister can all recognize your dad sucks. She was always kind of like the favorite, and so she was a little more sympathetic towards her dad than anyone else. Lucy in particular was, but, you know. So, I just thought that was kind of interesting. But Lucy calls up Maggie and wants to talk to her. She's like, right, I'm sorry I did what she did. And Maggie leans into her. Maggie has every right to say what she said, but she was like, right, basically going on about you're a broken person. Because she uses their history where it's like, you were already dating someone else when you and I started kind of having a thing. But I thought like, no, 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 I can change you. So for her, it's like, this is a fitting pattern. You are a cheater by nature and you're a broken person. You're not a good person. And it's like, because Lucy is, a, like, that's the thing of, like, and who, who am I to, re like, yes, I'm sympathetic to Lucy because we, as we follow her as a character and she's made mistakes, you know, and I, you know, it's like, yeah, it wasn't just like a small affair. It went on for a long time. You stopped it and then you still continued it and you had the opportunity to tell Maggie, but you chose not to because you didn't want to blow up your life. It c cuts it and makes it even worse because it's like, right, she's pregnant with your child and it's like, that's going to be a whole complicated thing going forward because it's like, Especially with the marriage being on the rocks, like Maggie's going to have, going to have nothing to do with you. But also, like I said, it's understandable for her to be as upset as she is because she was lied to and she was cheated on. And this is still super fresh of her finding out. So, of course, she's going to have all the smoke for Lucy. Understandable. But it's still like she, I, she has every right because she's in a vulnerable place. She's coming from a place of hurt. Like... It's understandable. I wish she didn't cut Lucy the way she did. Because, yes, like, it's kind of almost like Abby, but Abby's one thing, because Abby's always kind of been a little bit of a dick to you, can you so you can kind of handle it, because, like, you know, asshole-ish, sarcastic asshole-ishness is Abby's default. But this is, like, your wife you're talking about, like, the person you love, cutting you deep like that. So it's that thing of, you could say, like, Someone, certain people could say certain things to you a thousand times. It just takes one person to say it. They can cut even deeper. In this case, Abby could say all this cheating stuff towards you. You're a cheater, blah, blah, blah. But it cuts even deeper hearing it from Maggie literally saying that you're not a good person. I mean, Abby literally was like, oh, I want you to fudge your results. Oh, I just figured like you, your morals are already compromised. So I might as well ask, you know. So she's been on that same line. But hearing Maggie say you're not a good person, that you're broken, it, it it hits differently. So what that means for Lucy's journey, especially because her dad didn't really console her this episode. He was just like, hey, I heard about what you're going through. Why did you even, why'd you go to uh, Abby? Why don't you come to my place? It's like, well, your place isn't really applicable for me to stay there. But then that kind of quickly got moved on. So we'll see what that kind of, uh, what that goes to. And I think it's always that thing of uh, those in a medical profession can kind of be the worst doctors because I, her as a, and that psychiatrist, psychiatry field like she probably needs to talk to a therapist to kind of deal with a lot of underlining issues that are there and present but still like she's because there's a lot she's that's going to be a probably a big part of her journey going forward this season once again now the only people that know is um i don't think jerry knows yet but uh and daniel doesn't know but now her dad and uh abby and you know joanne know so which speaking of joanne i love her showing up at uh the office 
And it's like, and I even love her talking to Jerry. It's like, you've changed. And she's like, you look fabulous. I'm so bummed that um, he got you into divorce. It's like, I, I love that. That's so sweet. And when she was like, Daniel, it's like, oh, hi. It's like, oh, you know my mom? It's like, yeah, she was my best friend before she slept with my husband and walked away. And it's like, yikes. Um, but yeah, they were working together as a team to try and convince Abby to protect herself. Because even, even her dad was like, yo, your mom's 100% right. You need to protect yourself. Because everything, both of them were kind of making the point that everything is kind of going Frank's way so far with like the way things have kind of played out. Because you've been villainized. He's been looked at as the same. But it's like, no, he's not that great of a person either, especially with this. So you need to prepare yourself, especially because in a situation where like the kids might get swung more his way because of everything. Because the way he's presented and like, you know, even though you've been working on yourself, that can still be used to get you so it is a situation of like yeah she's just kind of like it's for one i don't want relationship advice from you two but also the fact is you two being in sync like this is weird and creepy and i'm leaving this situation um i do love that uh their dad tried to bring uh because crystal wanted to sit down with the family i'm like really the entire family especially when he wanted to invite jerry i was like you know how jerry feels about crystal that's i mean you know how everyone feels about crystal it's like that's not gonna sit well but he used that as a guise of oh yeah like we're going out to celebrate daniel and jerry's like why it's like everyone's inviting include you jerry and he's like why she's like for daniel and i'm like you could tell she was like no that something's weird why would you like, why would you like, you, you specifically want to invite your family and include me? That seems weird. You want to make it seem like a family thing, but it's like, why not invite like the entire, like, you know, main crew of people? Like, you know, like, why not like a Nina and Cecil as well? I even love Cecil. I'm like, oh, you think that included me? And everyone's like, no, it doesn't include you, Cecil. Uh, but I'm like, I'm so. I was just like, yeah, that's probably not going to go the way you want it to. Especially because he was hesitant to have, like bring her around the office. But he's like, she's like, nah, I'm not going anywhere, so I'm going to stick it out. So kind of dropped some surprise on everyone. To be fair, Jerry bailed out. But Jerry's like, yeah, I kind of had an inkling something was weird. So it's like, yeah, kind of a good thing. And the sad thing is, Crystal actually was making an attempt. But just like Abby kind of has her assholishness, like you rub people the wrong way when you say like, oh, Lucy, like uh, Tegan and Sarah are coming. So are you and your wife going to see him? It's like, because they're gay. And she's like, no, that's not why. It's like, she legitimately was just kind of like, oh, I figured like maybe this group might be like, like maybe she's like, oh, that might be your, your more of your taste. Like, you know, so I figured like maybe you'd be more happy about that. And it's like, oh, try to talk to Abby. He's like, oh, I'm sorry that you're an alcohol. Forgot about that. It must be tough drinking, being around people who drink. She's like, oh, God, I I, I could, I love my bubbly. If I wouldn't be able to do it, I, if I didn't have drinks, I'd have to kill myself. It's like, yeah, she's just, she's a dick with kind of no social nuance to her. Uh, and it blow up at, and kind of screw things up with Daniel. I was like, oh, congr congratulations, Danny. Daniel. Like, she's like, Daniel. Um, it's like, oh, it's a good thing. Abby kind of swung thing your way. And it's like, cool Daniel didn't know that so three for three and uh, their dad comes back like what happened she's just kind of like I don't know it's like sh your girlfriend was your girlfriend so that's definitely gonna be interesting once again if you wouldn't put yourself in a position regardless of it's a character once again it is it is I broad stressed it last season of there's so many parallels of people being like yeah this is me caricaturing it up because I'm saying all the stuff I need to say because it gets me like, do you actually believe it? Yes, there are people who, once again, you believe certain stuff. I'm like, okay, you say some hateful shit. I don't like you. And it's it's weird to say respect, but it's like, if that's what you believe, I can just go ahead and cross it off. And like, okay, that's what you believe. It makes you even worse when you like, oh, I don't actually believe half this stuff. I say it's all meant to be a con, which people could say in the larger uh, genre of things. Like, oh, like that's that's just reality now. Like a lot of fake news and people saying stuff they don't quite believe just for the purposes of it gets clicks, it gets attention. I'm going to have the hottest takes and blah, 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 right? That's Crystal. We had that conversation last season and reiterating it this season. So... Uh, obviously, like, she's getting bigger, and she's no longer having to just produce and do the camera stuff on her own. Like, she has an actual, like, high-paid team to do it now, because, like, she's hit mainstream now. So, it's like, that's probably just going to make that even worse. So, especially if things get serious, that's potentially your new stepmom. Like, that's, oh, that's going to be a whole, um whole issue. So, that's, that's definitely going to be interesting to see how... Um, that continues to play out. 
Another angle to this episode involves uh, Abby and Frank's daughter. Because the moment Leigh had to sit down, what happened? Their daughter immediately believed that. It was like, oh, mom's screw Because mom continues to be the screw-up. And you could tell it was affecting their son. It didn't even cross my mind because, right, he's the one that showed her the text. And so he recognized and pieced it together like, okay, something's not right. And then Frank's like, yeah, don't be so hard on your mom. And Abby's looking at him like, What? She could easily throw him under the bus, but she chose not to because it's like, I'm not trying to do that. But it's like, you're the one in the wrong here, and I'm the one catching all the heat because of my past mistakes, even though I've strived. And her daughters had like this animosity towards her because she still holds so many issues from before the video and everything. Like, there was already issues there, and then the video and just her public breakdown, just everything going wrong, her issues, and just how public that was made it even worse. And so, no matter how much like Abby took steps forward, it'd be like, oh, her daughter takes steps. With her, but the problem is she'd also take two steps back. This is the biggest leap forward because um, their son brought up like mom it's only no mom you should have seen her face when I showed her the text and in that moment their daughter's face was almost like so I wonder did she know on some level but the moment's like wait what text she didn't ask any questions once again this show is edited on the CW like it's like a minute there's usually like one scene that's cut from the show just for just to save time just for commercial purposes here I, I I don't know that's so I guess commercials work a little differently like maybe it's just we have more slightly more one or two more commercial breaks um in a um here in the US than we do uh than they do in Canada but it's like why even a minute is different cuz that that minute could be another one or two advertisements squeezed in, depending on the length of the ads. So, you know, from that sense. But it's just like, yeah, it's something I've looked into and noticed. Like, yeah, it's literally usually like a minute plus. It's never like a big thing, but, you know, it, it doesn't change the episode. But there are there is at least one or two scenes, typically one scene. Like I said, it's, a, it's usually like a minute long scene or something that's usually cut from the episode, which is such a weird thing, but it is what it is. Um... But either way, putting all, all, all those uh, tangents and everything aside, Abby, their their daughter, like, eventually was around her dad, and she looked at the messages, and it turns out Frank misled the situation with Felicity. He made it seem like, all oh, their marriage was on the rocks, even though they were in a better position. And she's like, you may humiliate me. It's like, you made it seem like that's what you wanted, but then you're, like, telling your wife, like, it's not what it was, you know? And that she's misreading the situation. I never want to be a home record. That's where I think it's that situation where like some people are like, no, no, no. I thought your relationship was kind of over. So I'm not trying to be the other woman because a home record does catch a lot of flack, you know, and there are some people who are intentionally home records, but you also, it does fall on the guy too, to be like, said it clearly like, okay, me and my marriage, we like a uh, marriage, like oh, our marriage is uh, practically over. It's not over until you're officially divorced. Even to separate things, kind of a complicated territory, but I, I, I think it, like uh, you can like spare everyone a lot of the, like at least some of the heartache and hurt if you just make it so. Hey, we're divorced, but it especially sucks because Frank and Abby were working on. Once again, they slept together last season, and Abby was super hyped about it, and so was Frank. But now it's like, wait, like this this pops up now. So, um, so. Their daughter went over and showed Abby and that solidified it for her, especially after everything with Norma's case of like, I don't know, you, I can guarantee that you won't hurt me again. Like, that was something she had to consider. Like, you know, it's like, right. It's like, because that, that comes out to every person because some people are able to make it work. Hey, you cheated. I'm able to work through it. You let it happen again. We're done. But other people, it's like, one is done. Like, you cheated on me once. We're done. We're over. Like, you know, it just comes down to every person, like how much they're willing to take. Because that is the thing of if you are with someone who cheated, it will always be in the back of your mind of, How do I know that it won't happen again? That will always be in the back of your mind. And that's not a, that's not anything for a healthy relationship. That's not good for your relationship. That's not good for your own mental health to be stressing and worried about that. Like, that's always going to be a nagging thing. So, you know, so Abby's doing what's right by her. Her daughter's like, I don't want to stay with dad anymore. Especially because it's like, right, dad being kind of the sleazeball that he is, but also knowing her mom's in a better place. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I'm wondering they're going to bring up Aunt Lucy's issues, like why she's staying there. So that's going to be interesting. And I'm sure Lucy's going to be staying there for a while, considering everything, probably until she's able to get her own place and, or at least until they see the aftermath of everything with her and Maggie. But I'm sure that's not going to 
go in a positive direction. So, like I said, I think that's going to get even more complicated with her being pregnant. So, to be fair, Lucy wasn't always keen on the whole being a mother thing. But, you know, having the thing of, like, having probably, like, be in a position where, like, Maggie will probably make her, like, sign over rights completely. It's like, that's still my child, but even if I might not have won anything initially with the child. You know, so I'm sure that's going to be a complicated slope and uh, trajectory for uh, uh, her as well, but... Way to start off the season. I'm excited to have Family Law back. I'm excited to see where the rest of the season takes us. I already know, I, I talked about this before, I know season three is already come and gone, potentially. I know, I was watching something, and it, it might be done by this point, or maybe nearing the end if it's not already done, but I know like season three was airing for a while now. I, mean, I think, I, I'm assuming it's season three was like 13 episodes like last season. I'm assuming this is 13 as well. Or was it 10? It might have been ten. I don't. I don't remember off the top of my head now how many episodes last season was. I mean, this you know, this season might actually be a little longer. Like, say last, last season was ten. This might be thirteen, or maybe last season was thirteen and this is thirteen too. Either way, doesn't matter. I'm excited to have another full season of Family Law. I was wondering, like, were we not going to get this? Because you know, because I think it's because I, in in my mind, I'm thinking like the coroner situation. There was like literally no break in between season one and two of coroner because um, the CW got the rights of those kind of as a package deal. This, I guess, either they already had it and they just took longer to come out with it because they want to spread out just because of content-wise. Like, oh, we need you know to fill out some of this stuff, especially with some stuff ending and getting canceled, so, so on and so forth. Right? But anyway, like I said, excited to have Family Law back. Very excited to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.